Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Kyle. And in this special edition of Control Issues, you'll get a behind the scene look at the uh, build process that we go through in making a project. So instead of showing you the finished end result and giving you instructions of how to build it, you'll actually see us brainstorm, try, fail, and build something hopefully that succeeds. Today's challenge is to build a robot that drives up a metal surface using magnets. <laughs> So this is my thought process. I'm gonna to try to keep it simple. I have started with a junior Runt Rover and I'm actually going to be using it um, without the universal board adapter on top to keep the profile low. Um, and I have a little standoff right in the middle there on the top um, using a center hole adapter. And then I've taken a channel plate uh, or a pattern plate and I have a dozen one inch magnets on here. Now this. Uh, is going to be pretty powerful. Each of these magnets has over 1300 gauss and uh, can hold over 11 pounds, but that's if it's actually touching the thing that it's holding and it's uh, directly held vertically like this. Um, we're going to be on a wall and we don't actually want to make uh, contact with the wall. So I'm going to start with this and see uh, if how well it works. And I just need to attach this to this and we're going to test it out. So I had a lot of different ideas for this wall climbing robot and basically what I want to do um, with my, my end assembly is have the wheel magnetic instead of having magnets on the chassis. That way no matter what the terrain is that I'm running across, hopefully it's going to be able to stick to it. So I can run it on like a corrugate 10 on a metal building or uh, hopefully duct work up above to, to run your AC or your heat. Um, so I'll start with the most complex and go through that right quick and then get into one of the more simple ideas that I've had. Um, my, my absolute dream was to take an off-road tire and wheel and make that magnetic somehow. So what I've done is I've put a bunch of the ball bearing rollers around the outside edge and those are floating on standoffs and then instead of running eight of them, I've replaced one with a series of one inch magnets here. And uh, those things are running on some ball bearings down inside as well. So they roll just like the rollers do. Um, so my thought pattern here was, as this thing rotates around, you know, maybe you're driving on the ground and then when it hits a piece of metal, it's gonna be able to drive up the wall and this here would actually float independent of the tire and wheel as it rotates. Um, so I think that would be by far the coolest, but for time's sake, uh, I've kind of sidelined this one and I'm looking into other options. My second idea was a lot more simple, uh, basically just cut out a piece of plastic, press some magnets in the outside edge, and uh, put a rubber lip ring on there. That way it doesn't just slide down the wall. Uh, a few disadvantages to this. Number one is, unless you glue these magnets in, it's an absolute bear to put together. Uh, so I've got a magnet here, and hopefully I can slide this in and show you how it was gonna work out. And that one did happen to stay. But uh, they, they walk out really easily, and start sticking to one another, and then all of a sudden you've got a complete mess. That was one of the issues. The other issue that I have with it is you only have one magnet that's really contacting at each at any moment in time, um, and you're you're using the side of the magnet, so you don't have a lot of stick onto the wall. So I think that's going to be another issue there. Two things worth noting here: these magnets are are powerful enough to ruin your day. So if you're working with them, especially a whole bunch of them, you need to be careful. And secondly, this uh, steel I beam here is just barely wide enough for this robot. So I need to be very careful when I position it up here or the whole thing will smash into the steel and these magnets can be pretty uh, brittle and break apart and you'll have a bunch of sharp edges. Okay. That's a bit much. <laughs> oh. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a few less magnets in the next version. Well I've gone full circle on the build. I've gone from very complex to very simple and I've tested both of these options. And while I think the simple route is gonna be good for a one day build, I really just can't let this option go. 
So I've simplified that down a little bit and started to build my chassis. Um, on this you can see I've got some magnets on a one inch bearing mount and the magnets are held on with a flathead screw down inside of here. Um, and, and basically these magnets just swing totally independently of this wheel as it rotates. So my hope is as you drive up to a wall, these magnets will swing up and lock and then you can make the transition to a vertical plane and drive right, up, right on up the wall. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate this for all four wheels and put a motor controller on it and see how it works out. This is my simplified version. In the last version, um, I had way too many magnets, but through trial and error, I realized just four stacked one inch magnets would be sufficient. Um, and with these wheels, the spacing is just right. Um, and I'm holding them together and holding the whole robot together, in fact, with a standoff in the inside. So it's cinching it together. In fact, it's kind of compressing it a little bit, which is perfect for what I, what I want. Um, so this particular build should not only hold together, um, it should be very, very sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. Spacing looks just right. Um, <laughs> holds really good it's there's still enough uh, play to move around I'm encouraged by that uh, I think now it's time to hook up the electronics now that I have the electronics in place I'm gonna do a quick little test to see if I can drive from the floor to the wall lined up You'll notice since uh, the wheels have been popping off while I was testing on the girders, um, they're more free to pop off now. They've come a little loose. The other problem I think is that the the, the um, breadboard clamp that I'm using to hold on the battery is hanging too low and back and that's hitting the floor and preventing it from transitioning all the way up the side. So I'll have to rethink where I place that battery. As you can see, we have two very different designs. Well, okay, the, the more we iterated, the closer our designs came to each other, not purposefully. In fact, um, I really tried not to make mine look like his and vice versa, but um, uh, that's sort of the way it ended up. Uh, I have to say, Kyle, at the beginning, I felt pretty confident. The more you iterated and evolved your design, uh, the less confident I became that I would win this. Tell us about your design currently and how you got there. Okay, well, the, the current version basically um, says swinging magnets. It kind of looks like earrings as it drives or something. But uh, anyways, you know, I'm hoping for these to swing up, contact the wall, and then make the transition. And so they're always going to be facing whatever that metal surface is. Uh, the chassis itself is a single piece of aluminum channel. And then I've got some, uh, some motor mounts or some tube clamps that happen to be the same size as the motor to use as the motor mounts. And then uh, shove the Actobotics motor controller down the center and put a LiPo on the outside connected to a receiver so I can run it wirelessly. So relatively simple overall. Nice. Uh, it's lovely. I really like that design. I still hope I win, but I really like that design. Um, mine I've completely changed. I went completely back to the drawing board. Um, I have some Econ motors uh, mounted to a channel plate here, but I still have my original design concept of having the magnets on the bottom. I have two stacks, uh, four magnets, uh, one inch in diameter in the middle, three towards the front, and I, I had these wheels on there, which admittedly looked way cooler. But the problem is there's so much squish um, that it, it ended up being a hindrance because I couldn't uh, precisely tell the distance between the magnet and the surface it's attracted to. So I was forced to go to a solid wheel, which is when these designs really started looking similar. Um, but I went to a different solid wheel. I went to our round base plate A, uh, mostly just to be different from Kyle. Um, but really, if I were building this or making this a kit and, and showing you how to make it, I'd probably go with the 
the precision disc wheels uh, because they're going to be more cost effective and just as strong. But this is mostly so we have at least something distinguishing them. But m mostly the, the, the main difference between our designs at this point in time is where and how we mount the magnets. So we've both done stick tests where we've stuck it up to the wall and things, um, but now we're going to go through one at a time and try to actually drive it from the floor to the wall. Oh, it's sticking, but not enough friction. Come on, yeah, God, almost. So we both had some level of success, not perfect, but you know, I really feel like the main problem is friction, how much friction you have on those disc wheels. Um, I feel like if we doubled up the disc wheels, mm -hmm. so you still have no compression from a squishy wheel and you'll be doubling the amount of friction, I think we'd be doing better. But let's go ahead and test it on the girder next before we make any more, form, before we make any more modifications because I feel like it'll do better there. I agree. Now the main difference here is that this steel is a lot thicker and there's going to be a lot more attraction to the magnets and which will give us that extra friction we're hoping for, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good. A little extra traction would be nice, but I can pretty much go where I want. So test number one didn't go so well for either one of us. We didn't make it up the wall very far. What do I, you think? I still think uh, an extra set of wheels would have given us the friction we needed or potentially a little more magnets. I think it could be done with a little more tweaking, but at this point, um, I think we'll just say we collectively got a point between the two of us. Okay, we've got participation points for test number one. Test number two, well, you guys saw what happened. Um, I've got absolute carnage here. Mine fell off the beam. Thank you, Jason. Yep. Uh, Jason's did fairly well. Uh, it didn't like going up the, the vertical uh, or straight vertical surface, but if you went sideways and did very well, you could steer it, drive it. It's pretty cool overall. Um, my thought at this point is, what if we maybe combine the two, um, lighten yours up, change the battery out for a smaller battery, uh, maybe put some swing magnets on the wheels, use your magnets on the bottom of the chassis, kind of build a, uh, a best of both worlds. Sure, robot. yeah, essentially use your lighter wheels with the extra attraction of the extra magnets on my body. Um, that'll give us the extra grip we need going up that wall. I think that would work really well. Let's try it out, we need to conquer this. So here we are, it's the end of the day. This is our final product. Uh, hopefully it works. It uh, takes into account everything we've learned today from all the experimentation and testing and different designs. We have the underbelly magnets. We have the earring uh, magnets hanging around on the inside of dual uh, precision disc wheels uh, to give us extra friction. And so we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Come on, come on. Yeah. Kyle, can you grab it? Here's what I think we learned. I feel like the, the underbelly magnets are more reliable once you get up onto that flat surface. Um, I think Magnets in the wheels would have worked really got good on a curved surface, um, but up on the girder there, I really feel like maybe we could have had one or two more levels of the underbelly magnets. What do you think? Yeah, probably that and acetyl wheels instead of acrylic. Yeah, and uh, we may still be running. Or the aluminum wheels. Or aluminum. Yeah. However, uh, the wheels cracking do act as a shock absorber so that that force isn't transferred into the shaft of the motor. It was planned that way. Yeah.
But wait, we can't stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to actually make something that drives around without falling. Um, so that's why just before the end of the day that day, I came in and made these modifications. So right now we're going to go through and test that out. Here's the corrugated steel test. I think that works. Steel girder time. still a success. That's still a success. <laughs> right from the floor, right up, until I inadvertently ran into the ceiling, so to speak. Um, I'd say this is our winner. <laughs> Turning the... There we go. It's a little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. Orientation is funny, but hey, look at that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I call a finale. That's the end. I'd say that's a success. What do you think? I think so, yeah. Ta-da. Looks good, yep. So at the end of the day, I'm actually quite happy with those results. The only times it fell were due to driver error. So um, it actually is a successful build in my opinion. And uh, you can go ahead and watch for this build in Robot Magazine and we'll post the whole step-by-step -step instructions on Instructables.com.